After oil was discovered in Norman Wells, a steamboat full of white people came down the Decho River. Armed with priests, they provided documents to the Decho Dene knowing full well that the indigenous population did not speak English. The Dene believed at the time that the priests could communicate directly with God and trusted that the priests were acting in their best interests. This documentary is a collaborative project with Dustin Dewar of Dugas Films to bring awareness to Treaty 11 and how we look as a nation a hundred years later after signing the treaty. And we are celebrating the fact that we, the Decho Dene, are still here. Hey, this is Lawrence Nealionte. A joint city queen, a joint bondek yatsi. My name is Lawrence Neali. I am uh, originally from Wrigley, Pitsekinde. I'm here on city queen First Nations land. Uh, we're here on Treaty 11 territory. Tiramosa suje, lila kwe gote pitseki aite, re menakash simo, fluid Moses seta. My name is Tyra Moses. I am from Fort Simpson in Wrigley, Northwest Territories, also known as Liliqua Petzeki. My mother is Lauren Menakash, my father is Floyd Moses. I am the CEO and founder of Dene Media. Dene Media is committed to Indigenous representation in media and education. So the question you had asked earlier is, what does Treaty 11 mean to me? For myself, coming from a Dene perspective, you know, that document is a representation of peace and friendship and nothing more and nothing less. You know, the governments don't own one grain of sand up here. And I stand by that with the people uh, of my nation. But, you know, going a hundred years from now, we have to figure something out. You know, we can't sit idly by and drag this on even further. We have to reimagine the future that we want for ourselves and self-determining for ourselves who gets to be involved in that work and how that work rolls out. Uh, the treaties itself is just peace and friendship. And we like it so far. And it's, you know, it's been good, but there's definitely major improvements that need to be made. And for the younger generations, I think it's very important and vital for you to, you know, continue your, edu your education, uh, continue not only your westernized education, but also your traditional education as well. That's very vital. You know, being strong like two people takes a lot of work, but the payoff is something so beautiful. And that's the beautiful thing is leaving those kind of things behind, you know, knowing that you've tried your best to ensure that a future is protected for uh, the, the children that, you know, that we're trying to craft something for them. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that's where I want to leave that. So uh, I'll ask you, Tyra, um, you know, for, for yourself, what does Treaty 11 mean to you and where do you see it 100 years from now? So Treaty 11 to me means a recognition of that we as Dene Nations people are a nation. Only nations can sign treaties with other nations. And this was an international treaty that recognized that the Dene Nations people were always in control of their lands. We have a language, we have a culture, and we have our own traditions, and we have governed this land since time and immemorial. We have never ceded the land or surrendered the land. As our elders taught us, we must continue our way of life and continue to protect the land for those that do not have a voice. The Dene are the peoples and the peoples are a part of the land and we are here to protect not only ourselves, but the animals, the land, the waters, and the plants and the medicine. Thank you very much for taking this time to watch this film, Masi Cho. Hey, Masi, that said, Tenets it in the Kala Joats it in Dago, Kala, it was it in the 
I just want to say that, you know, we've been here for thousands of years and we're going to be here for thousands more. And all we want is our traditional territory. Uh, it's the right thing to do after being lied to for so long. Merci. Merci. What followed next was a Dene drum dance to celebrate and dance out all the bad energy. And if you're sore the next morning, you didn't dance hard enough. These drum songs are an oral tradition passed down from generation to generation. Thanks to LKFN for organizing a traditional photo booth as well as other craft workshops so no one got bored throughout the celebration week. Elizabeth Hardesty kept a table open for elder discussion, much to Martha's delight who is visiting from London, Ontario. Community members incorporated other Indigenous cultures such as ribbon skirts, pop buttons and other crafts. Mavis and Tracy were baking throughout the week to ensure that no one went hungry. Traditional games allowed everyone an opportunity to blow off some steam, with Beth Hudson showing how to get a couple bullseyes, Jonas Lafferty took up the bow and arrow. But when you're this good, you only need one. Placing a close second in the three-legged race, it was off to the talent show so Alondra could listen to her first fiddle music. We then watched Serena Hanna play second overall in youth jigging. As always, the celebration ended with some Johnny Landry and Dean Anna Hope. It is agreed that this treaty will be honored as long as the land is here, as long as the grass grows, as long as the water flows, as long as the sun shines in the east and sets in the west, this will not change. There is still hope for future generations to assert their land rights through the Daycho process. Through education and awareness we can all help to ensure that the land is protected for the next hundred years. Thank you for watching this film, Masi Cho. <laughs>